hello and welcome to Retro Racing Reviews, where this time out we're going to be taking a quick look at this fantastic machine and uh, Group C Racing and a bit of Le Mans in general. So uh, Group C Racing basically kicked off in the, uh, the 1980s and gave rise to some absolutely fantastic cars. Just hope I can do this one justice. I'm just gonna keep it nice and tidy because the tires are still still blue. It says. Now this thing has just an absolutely enormous amount of grunt. We're talking about I would say eight, nine hundred brake horsepower overall, roughly speaking. Depending on what trim they'd be running it in. And uh, you had cars of this uh, this nature hitting 240 mile an hour thereabouts. Phenomenally quick. I mean, we're talking as fast, if not faster, than F1 cars. I mean, th these were effectively F1 cars with you know with a, with, a, with a body kit on top. And uh, you're you're looking at something the uh, the, the Saab and Mercedes C9. Whoa through the coat. Um, this made its debut in 1987 and um, later went on to win the title and uh, the Mercedes team gave their debuts to um, Heinz Howard Frensen and uh, Michael Schumacher among uh, other people. Um, Joey Dumfries also drove one of these. You know, he was uh, British aristocracy, drove uh, drove a Lotus and also uh, had a crack in one of these as well so uh, there you have it. Now the idea of Group C was effectively to have a standard set of regulations to, to govern this type of motorsport. Um, I mean these cars are normally referred to as, as prototypes as opposed to the, uh, the GT category which is sort of uh, race prepared Road, kind of road, road cars. So you know, your Porsche 911 GT3, for example, um, that's normally in a separate category. So nowadays you'll, you, they'd be called things like sort of LMP1, LMP2, um, and, and really it's for the. These cars don't, they don't go on the roads. They're not, they're not, they're not designed to in any, in any way, shape, or form. They're just primarily you know, track-bred monsters, but just uh, for endurance racing rather than the, uh, the short sprints that uh, you know you'd be uh, looking at in your average F1 race. So I mean, these things were designed to to go for for 24 hours, and um, you had companies uh, from all over the all over the spectrum. You had uh, effectively people operating um, shoestring outfits out of their garage. And then you had uh, the, 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 the big, uh, the big players. You know your Mercedes, uh, your, your Porsches. Uh, you know you had Mazda, you had Nissan. You had uh, you had the British effort from Jaguar, which uh, I mean obviously the, the silk cut Jaguars. I'm sorry, but you know I hate tobacco, I hate smoking, but you can't argue that the uh, the, uh, the, the some of the liveries didn't look really rather pretty so uh, you know Marlborough Silk Cut Rothmans I'm asthmatic by the way so I'm not advocating smoking in any way shape or form I mean if you're smoking right now stop get get a vape do something do something else um, you know your lungs will thank you for it I mean my lungs will thank you for it but anyway, I digress. Um, so what you ended up with was um, you know, th these fantastic looking cars, phenomenally powerful, and pretty much they, uh, but, you know, in, in the 80s, they were getting towards the level of popularity that sort of rivaled F F1 in some respects. Now, I, um, I started watching F1 in 1989, and I was a little bit too young for the, the sort of the pomp of uh, the Group C era. I only really caught the probably the last little bit with, um, say, obviously Peugeot and the 905 winning uh, winning Le Mans, um, which was a shame because again that car 
just a fantastic bit of machinery. So overall, it's a, you know it's a shame that uh, kind of Group C did uh, did sort of disappear. And um, it's only probably, I would guess, in the last uh, sort of the, the late nineties, you had a bit of a resurgence with um, you know Porsche, and Mercedes, and a few uh, other people producing. Uh, Equally fast cars, but sort of you know, based on road-going automation um, specials. But yeah, they, they were they were track cars, effectively. That somebody had just about worked out how to how to make road legal. Um, but it wasn't really until I suppose the more modern era and the World Endurance Championship that uh, you've ended up with um, a championship where you've got. You know, several teams who have power, you know, fast, you know, really dynamic looking prototype uh, machinery that can uh, can kind of have that same sort of impact that you had with uh, you, you had with Group C. Um, so the idea was that um, because Group C was suffering from people just cranking out some higher and higher boost pressure to, uh, to get more power, um, and uh, people couldn't um, keep up with that pace of, of development. Um, the idea was set to limit the amount of fuel you could use during uh, during any given race. So what that meant was that uh, you could actually um, get away with a, a smaller, more economical power unit. And it did mean that uh, some teams without a massive budget could, in theory, still compete whereas uh, the teams like Porsche uh, who um, did favour the, uh, the turbo units they also sold uh, customer cars so you could buy yourself a Porsche 956 or a Porsche 962 and um, you know you could you could go racing in it and you could you know, line up alongside you know the, the big teams and uh, you know you could actually have a you know, make a make a fist of it. I mean, you won't, you know, you, you won't get a win, but uh, you know, you certainly could be could be there and competing, which, um, you know, oddly enough, wasn't you know, wasn't that bad a plan. I mean, IndyCar, sort of Indy Racing League, call it what you will, had a you know has a similar principle that, in effect, if you you know if you've got a bunch of people who vaguely know what they're doing, you can you can go and buy you know buy buy your chassis from Dallara or you know your engine from Ford. Go and find a you know, go and find a driver, and you can you can run in the Indy 500. So um, you know there was a little bit of that kind of uh, you know kind of inclusivity. I mean, obviously these things wouldn't have come cheap at all, but you know it was it was doable, and uh, you know you did see people who would actually come along and uh, give it a go. So um, I mean, Formula One did have a a similar sort of thing when um, I think one year there were 39 drivers trying to qualify for 26 spots on the grid so it was the era where any um, anybody could in theory put together a team go Group C racing go racing in uh, in F1 um, obviously that's stopped now which is a shame but uh, that's just the way it goes but hopefully um, this is giving you a little bit of a flavour of what uh, what Group C is like. I, you know, I love this car. Look at it. It's 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 going to crash. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to run through there. But uh, just, you know, one final one final look. Yes, of course, of course, my lap times are faster. They are if you just drive straight through the gravel trap, but, uh, but anyway, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, uh, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment if you uh, if you want. Um, I don't get many, so I'll be sure to read them. Um, if there's any uh, anything you'd like to see me cover next, then uh, do let me know, um, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks ever so much. Bye.